printer out so we can see what we're doing there's the printer it's all sellotaped up which is good so i'm going to use my little new craft knife cut that through and let's just peel off everything so guys this is the brand new humbro 3d printer that they've just released this week it's been it was announced um a few months back we saw pictures of it at the F. It's created day, and here we are with it here. Um, basically, you get this printer, you get this uh, filament roll or spool, you get this holder, which you've got to put together, just clips on the side. You also get a USB cable, you get a platform leveling uh, card to, to level up the platform. You also get this SD card reader, um, adapter I should say USB so SD card goes in there and that transfers files from the PC to the printer you get this uh, screwdriver to adjust the 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 bed the height of the bed and uh, we'll go into that later on you get this little screwdriver for changing the filament head if there's a problem and you also get this spatula to scrape off the 3d print so there you go that's what you get inside the box and before i forget you also get a power supply with this as well so it just plugs straight in into the back and this is a three pin transformer so guys here's the printer i've taken it out of the box and i've just set it up to have a little play with it but let's go over it's a one button operation apparently um it comes with an sd card that you put the file on put it into the back of the machine and press the play button and it will just print the file that's on the on the card. It comes with an adapter, obviously, this one here, and uh, you put the SD card into this adapter, put it in your computer and uh, use the software. Now, I went to download the software and I cannot get the software to work on my Mac. There might be an issue there. Um, it took ages to download as well, this program, but apparently you should be able to do it from the actual card. For some reason, it wouldn't. Um, so I'm going to be printing using the file that's on there, which is uh, Humbro Peg, apparently. But the quality build is quite a sturdy build. Um, this here, as I said, you know, when I open up the box, this all came with it, this like filament and the holder, and you just put that on the side. Um, now, talking to friends, because I, I don't know much about the 3D print resin, anything like that, so I've not done a lot of it. I've asked people to do some for me, but I've never actually owned a machine myself. Uh, this row seems to be a little bit small, so if you get the bigger ones, you might struggle to fit them on here. So just as a, a byline. Um, so yeah, it marked up as Humbroom. But I just want to show you the back of it really first. If I uh, turn it around, if you see the back, there you go. So this is everything. This is the wire that comes out the back that goes for the actual um, print head, the printer head. That's where the SD card goes. And um, let me just take the power for a minute. So you've got uh, three settings. You've got feed and retract, which is for feeding in the filament. Retract to take out the film if you want to change colour. You then set it back in the middle once it's all set up because that's where it prints. So you've got, again, feed, retract. So you've got three settings. Feed, print, and then retract. But always leave it on print if you're printing. Now, what's disappointing is quality control. Um, and it makes you a bit petty, but you're paying 200 quid for this. And I just felt that the way the power button and the USB button isn't centered to the hole, if I just get in a bit closer, you can see they're a little bit off to the side. Now, you know, I know I'm an Apple guy and I do like things looking pretty sus, you know, pretty good. That there is a little bit, mm, you know, it's it just seems a little bit thrown together. So, but, you know, there's a USB port on the back, whether you can plug it straight into your laptop or into your PC, I don't know. But it does come with the cable for that as well. And there's your power supply, which fits in there. 
But yeah, it just, it just looks a little bit, yeah, you know, a little bit cheap, that does, unfortunately. But the build itself, if I just put the camera straight back up, you know, it's pretty sturdy. And to be fair, it's the sort of thing you could have on the side of your desk, on the side of your workbench if you want to print something off. But like everything, the the uh, the proof is in the pudding. So I'm going to print off a peg and see how we get on. So this is finished now apparently, this looks like uh, it's just stopped from doing its print, um, I don't know what it's doing now, it's doing some sort of movement, so whether it needs to finish, I think that's the home there, right, so that's it finished, let's get this move over a little bit, um, Already, you can see it's already raised up here, which was a, I was a little bit worried about. If I just lift it up a little bit, so you can see. Whoops, move that tab out of the way. Um, it started to lift up while it was printing. Um, let's just take it off. Take the thing off. Let's have a proper look at it. Um, right, so the print. You can see Humble there. It's their clip. Um, I assume you can just pull this off, can you? You've made yourself a little clip. So there's the base. Um, it's it's a bit of a misprint there, I guess. But yeah, you squeeze it. Yeah. There's a little clip there. I don't know what. It's quite a. Um, <laughs> it's quite um. Uh, what do you call it? A uh, stiff clip. But I suppose you can use it for something <laughs> hanging up your clothes weird sort of design but i do like it's got the fact it's got humble down the side that's quite nifty um but yeah it's definitely misprinted there unfortunately i don't know why um it looks like it didn't quite um stay on the table flat as it was printing but i suppose these are just things that you've got to um look out for and um and maybe it just needs a bit more of adjustment on the printer bed. So yeah, there you are. I'm not um, not too sure by this one. So yeah, what's your thoughts? You know, we've we've moved, we've made a peg. Um, I'm going to do it again just to see if that helps. Um, but I need to actually just make sure that the the bed is flat. So what I'll do is again, I'll perform another. Now the instructions do say. Um, Attempt to slot this piece of paper underneath the printer nozzle in one of the four corners of the printer bed. Manually move the printer head if required, but ensure all power is disconnected. So, you know, in, at the moment it's quite high, but, you know, how did you push it down? Or, you know, did I put it to home? Let's just find the home button here on the back. Let's see what happens if I, if I put it to home. Um, just uh, find that home button. So that's the home button there. So that's home. And is it lowering? It's lowering down. So let's just see if it... <clears throat> right, that's low. Right, so in theory, that... Yeah, it feels a bit high, but let's just um, switch it off and then manually move it to this corner here. Let's just see what happens to the paperwork then. So it's in there, let's just feed that in and see if the paper's catching underneath. And the paper's catching underneath there, pinching. So let's just um, move it to this side. Will it push? I don't like the foot, you've got to move it like that. So I've done that, pushing underneath. He's pinched, he's pinched. So I presume he's level. It's moving back a little bit to this corner here. 
I'll try them in here. No, it does feel like it's touching. Let's go back to here. If it'll let me. Cool. That's really tough. Push them there. Yeah, so it is pinching, so it must be level. But as I said, I don't understand why it uh, it's like that. So we need to switch it back on again. I'm going to let it print again and just see if I can get a better result than last time. So it's only fair that we, we give it two opportunities to get this right. So apparently, you um, once it's all up and running, it's got a printer on the back. I assume then all you've got to do is press this forward button and it will do what it has to do. Right. Now it's raising up. Lots of clicking. So now we just see what happens now, I guess. Um, let's see if it prints another one. And I'll come back and then we'll see if it prints a, a, a better version than this one that's cut off at the bottom here. Let's see. So this is print number three. And as you can see, the base there has just gone funny again. And I, I don't really know why. Um, if anyone can explain why it does that, then please let me know. So what is my thoughts on this printer? Well, obviously, there's a lot of potential here, especially with the tie-in with the Airfix and the Hornby ranges that, you know, you might be able to buy what they call STL files that you then put into a splicer, which is what the software is. I'm supposedly be trying to be able to open um, to this printer um, and then and print off little things that you could use in uh, your uh, model builds or on your train track, I guess. Um, it's £200, which I think is quite top end for a printer of this. Um, now, I've asked some friends and I've sent them details of this and I've already got some feedback that this is available, but not as humble, but as another brand. And unfortunately, it's roughly half the price of this one. So I don't know whether you're actually buying this product and it's the software that comes with it that's the money, or whether you can buy this almost likable, you know, similar, I should say, printer, um, and get the same software with it. I don't know why, you know, for £200, it's it's almost like going back to Revel and their, um, their starter airbrush. You know, people say you can buy the airbrush for £60, but the Revel one's £120 uh, because it's got a Revel sticker on it. Um, now, this is definitely isn't for everyone, okay? For those who are looking for the ultimate in performance, I would suggest going by what my friends have been saying to spend an extra 50 quid and buy an Endor 5 if you really want the all bells and whistles, dogs bollocks of a of a printer. But I think this is cool, you know, I think this can be quite a, a good little printer. And but what it wins for me, the, the, the big thing for me is, is that it's just you press the button and away you go. As long as you know what you're doing with the software. I believe that it is just take the file out, put it in the back of the machine and then press play and away you go. You know, print, I should say, not play, but it's like a play button, isn't it? Print button and away you go. And it's probably something that children be able to master. You know, if, if you've got children who want to get into 3D printing, I think this could be a way forwards. The size of it is quite compact. It's not got a lot of weight to it. So you can make it quite portable as well. So you can take it with you. Um, and if you're not pushed for space, um, you know, just have it on your workbench. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, I can, you know, it's going to be, uh, if I'm going to keep it, I haven't decided yet, but, you know, I need to use it a bit more because I'm, you know, I'm, I am pretty tech savvy. I like to think I am, you know, I'm the guy that, at Christmas, I get the phone calls, you know, when I was a kid, I used to forget manuals. I knew how to program video players and stuff, you know, and the family used to get me to do it, tune in the new TV and stuff. You know, that was, you know, that's what I'm into. I love tech. But even I am struggling with this a little bit to get a decent finish. And all I'm doing is printing a bloody peg, you know. 
Um, I have contacted Humbrew about this, and they're going to get back to me, because I can't get the software to work on my Mac. Now, I have a MacBook Air, which is running the latest software, which is um, Ventura. I've also got a Mac that's behind me that I used to edit videos on that's using iOS 12, which I think is um, Monte Monterey, I think it's called. But I can't get it to work on a Mac. And when I do put it on, it tells me it's going to download a file. So I'm not too sure. But... Going by what I've read so far on the other products of this, you know, you're going to get a good finish. You're not going to get a perfect finish. You're going to get a good finish. The query for me is, is the price. And also, if Humbro discontinue this, you know, what happens with the software? Do we get upgrades to software? Is it lifetime supply? Or have you got to buy new software? And can this run on other software? These are questions I don't know, which um, Humbro need to answer. Can I use any software for this printer? I'm assuming you can, because all it is is an STL file. But we'll see. We'll see. If they can come back to me with these sort of questions, that'll be good. I have emailed them about the problem with the Mac, um, but hopefully they'll get back to me while they watch this video. What do I rate it? I don't rate it. I'm going to leave it to you guys to work out for yourself, because there's going to be people there who know what resin printing is all about. I bought it because I was going to buy a resin printer and I thought, well, why don't I just wait that bit longer and get the humble one? Am I a bit disappointed? Yes. Am I annoyed that I can't get the software to work and do a proper review? Yes, I am annoyed because it should just work. That's the idea. And I just can't get it to work on both my, my Apple machines. And it does say on the box that it is... Um, iOS, sorry, OS, you know, Mac and Windows. Uh, Windows 7, 8... 10 i think it says on the on the box um actually i'll check the box now yeah windows 7 8 and 10 and mac 11.13 onwards so yeah it should just work but it doesn't scratch my head in on this one anyways that's it it's only a first look i'm going to do more with this machine before i send if i do send it back i'll let you know there's a little bit more in it, but if not, I might just send it back. I might just spend the extra 50 quid and buy the Endor 5 or um, save that 50 quid and buy an Endor 3. We shall see. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you like the video, click like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Ring that bell to be notified when I release a new video. Any questions, any comments, leave them in the box below and I do reply. And if you want to become a channel member, just click join. And for £1.99 a month, you'll be part of the Moz Models family where you get videos and extra bits in my community tab because you're a channel member. Thanks for watching. And if you've not seen my other videos, especially my builds, there will be a link here. And there'll also be another playlist here, which you can watch some more of my videos.